Let's chat about eight big ideas of the Constructionist Learning Lab and their connections to GIS education. Seymour Papert, considered by many to be one of the leading figures in the field of educational technology, outlined what he named the eight big ideas behind the Constructionist Learning Laboratory. This technology-rich center was housed at the main youth center. The first big idea is learning by doing. Papert says, we all learn better when learning is part of doing something we find really interesting and when we learn to make something we really want. That's one of the things I like most about teaching and learning with GIS. It is action-oriented by its very nature. One has to sort, select, organize, digitize, add fields, overlay, run spatial statistics, investigate, symbolize, and a myriad of other activities when using GIS. Take a look at this video of the activity in a typical GIS lab as evidence of the active nature of using this technology. The second big idea is technology as building material. Papert says, if you can use technology to make things, you can make a lot more interesting things. I think of the countless times that educators and students have learned they've created some GIS output. Wow, this is a map that they made. And they're beaming. They're proud of it. And rightly so. But they don't rest there. They're usually soon building on that map to make others or to apply what they've learned to another problem. The third big idea is hard fun. We learn best and we work best, according to Papert, if we enjoy what we are doing. But fun and enjoying doesn't mean easy. The best fun is hard fun. Interesting. None of us in the GIS education field sugarcoat GIS by saying that every part of spatial analysis is easy. It's not easy. It's often quite difficult. We say to educators, allow yourselves to walk before you run when learning GIS. That's one reason the network of people in the GIS field is so important. We really need each other, folks, to help us through the difficulties of grappling with putting what we want to do into the language of what a GIS can understand. I will reflect on the connections to GIS of the rest of Papert's ideas uh, in a moment. So, let me ask you though right now, do you model these ideas in your own GIS instruction? 